All right, so I was um, looking at your book, um, which is a beautiful, it's not a cookbook, I mean, there are recipes in there, but it is this remarkable um, creation, uh, beautiful photographs, beautiful paper, um, beautiful writing, and in it, uh, you have this neat passage where you're talking about um, uh, a restaurant in uh, Laguille, is that right, Laguille? Are you going to confirm? Don't you don't know what I'm saying? That's a French word. So. Michel Bras. Um, it's yeah. Michael Brass's. Michel Bras. Michel. Oh, God. Look at how I've started. You guys. <laughs> I actually took French, too. All right. Um, let's try to do the rest of this without any French. Um, you describe his restaurant um, as being a pure reflection of the region in which he's cooking. And... Um, I'm really curious about, you have two restaurants here in San Francisco, and you are, are a, a proud citizen of San Francisco. I'm curious if you would describe your restaurants as a reflection of the city. Um, yes, for sure. Um, I think a reflection of the city, but also a, a reflection of, of who I am. Um, what I love about the city of San Francisco, it's... Um, it's not just a city, I think it's a country in itself. Um, when you look, you know, the map of America, I think there is a lot of things going on here. Um, it's about uh, diversity, um, innovation. Um, it's about uh, also embracing um, difference. It's about um, have conversation without uh, thinking that there's just one way to think. There's a lot of different way to think. And I don't know, I'm just very happy to be here. So I think my food, um, is an homage to San Francisco, but also an homage to my life and an homage to the people that were in my life, my dream, uh, my struggle, and um, everything else. Yeah. So it's um, your, your background, you, you were raised in, in part in Versailles. Um, part of, in France. Partly, yes, America. in France. And Brittany, so I, I think one of the cool things is, um, the inspiring things is how your Cooking is both a reflection of your, it's, it's kind of a fusion in some sense, or a, a combination, I should say, of um, the, as the, the kind of heritage from Brittany as well as the, the, uh, your home here, um, in some sense, the past and the present. Do, are you conscious of those as two themes in, in, as you construct dishes, as you, as you put the plates together? Well, I think, I think what I'm conscious about is I think that food is art. So when you, you know, the ingredient are um, uh, color, uh, the color, and then I'm painting, you know, a plate. And I think at any time that uh, I'm not just doing food just to, to do food, I'm doing food to have a narrative and, and to also um, open a dialogue about um, things that perhaps we need to do or... Uh, but of course, you know, I mean, I, everything comes from my memories also. So yes, they have a big influence, but it's, uh, there's other things also. Yeah, it's, so, so it's quite literally a narrative. I mean, you put, when you put the menu together, you create a poem. You craft a poem for the, for the menu. And um, I, I mean, this is kind of, it's a remarkable artifact of what, what you've been able to put together that day with the producers and, the, and your, your, your team. Um, how, how does that poem come into being? Is that something you write uh, based on, like how does it, how, do, how are you inspired? I mean it's, it's interesting because at the beginning I used to write the poem and then I kind of created the food around it. Um, I, first of all, I don't like menus. I'm sorry guys. You go to a restaurant you like grilled fish, grilled fish with, uh, I don't know, basil sauce and it's not sexy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, but I think, you know, we, um, you know when, when you deal with food, there is, there is a poetry to that. You know, where the food comes from, you know, there is, there is a story behind it. And you, when you go to those um, incredible farmers, which uh, I always say they are the rock star of the food scene, we are not, we're just cooking. There is, there is, so, much, there is so much story behind it. So you need to um, uh, kind of, I don't know, this is kind of writing a song or writing... Um, uh, a love letters, you know, so it's um, it's very for me words matters and I think the feeling of the world the, the word matter also and and if I can bring food and word together it's, I think I it's it's very important to me. It's emotional. Yeah Well, it's amazing that you I mean the the, the, the beauty that you're able to pull out of that moment Not just in the food itself, but also the, the, the story the poem um, it's such a contrast with what um, 
what we may know or may think about happens in a kitchen, right? The the kind of um, uh, the the kind of boisterousness, the the, the energy, the chaos of a kitchen. Um, that's, no chaos. Oh, really? In your kitchens, there's no chaos. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I I I I believe it if you say so. But um, but certainly the there's a there's a reputation for the restaurant business as being very competitive and stressful. Um, first of all, is that, is that your experience? Is that, is that something, I mean, I know you, you try to create a specific culture in your own kitchens. Um, how do you avoid that? Well, I mean, I did work in kitchen where it was quite stressful and um, it's, um, even you think that there's a team, it's, I didn't feel that anyone had a voice. And I remember I, I kind of study um, kind of the interaction between people and I say, well, the day that I'm, maybe perhaps one day I will have my own place and I want to do things differently. Um, I think that, you know, food is energy. So you, if you have a team, every, every um, person of your team is going to touch the food. It's going to create with you those dishes. So you have two choices or you treat them badly and you don't care about them and it just, they're just a number or you kind of embrace who they are and, and want to bring them, to enable their creativity to the top and the food just tastes so much better. Um, it's also, you know, it's a, you know, Atelier Crane is, is, is also a place where it's a workshop. So we have to interact with each other. We have to um, uh, maybe argue with each other, but not in a way that is very respectful. You know, I, I don't believe in violence. I don't believe in yelling at someone. And I think I believe that we, when you talk to people, you have a narrative and then you exchange ideas. I think this is where evolution starts. So. And does, does your um, does your staff, does your team, are they? I mean, some of them you've had for you've been working with them for for, for a decade years. or more. So so it's clearly you've you've created a something unique. Um, how how have you found them? How have you found and cultivated the team? Um, I think I've been lucky, but um, I, I you know when they come, uh, if someone wants to work. For for us, uh, with us, um, I, I, resume is not something that I find quite interesting. Well, you weren't trained as a no. A um, I, I want you know I, I usually have a conversation with uh, with the, with a candidate and and I want to ask them about who they are, where they come from, what make them you know smile, what they may cry, and and I, I think I look uh, for determination. Uh, passion is one thing, but determination of wanting to, to do something very special, I think this is very important. And also, you, you, you're getting into a place where you're going to have a lot of people working together, so they need to understand also the structure and, and kind of the, the feeling of the team. So, um, I mean, I've been lucky. I mean, but there, there's also people that got in and got out very fast, you know. Egos is not a part of Atelier Crane or Petit Crane. Right. If you have egos, you're out. I'm the only one with egos here. <laughs> so, um, no, I'm kidding. So, so we, well, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably a little. Um, we've been hearing a lot about data this afternoon, and I'm, clearly there's a lot of um, important numbers or measuring of restaurants. There's, there's star ratings, there's scales, there's uh, Michelin stars. How... Um, how does that factor into this kind of, I mean, again, what I'm trying to get at is the contrast and the conflicts that, that kind of the environment you're trying to create, and then there's this whole world on which people are judging you by the stars and the numbers and the reviews. Um, I mean, it, it's interesting. I think, I think that we, we live in a world of, I think, of instant gratification, and people think when they get to a level and stars and things like that, their head explode and they, they choose the best of everything, but this is not the way that we need to think about it. I think every time we have those moments of, of accolade and we need to look at those and be just very thankful for it. And it's a, it's, 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 it's a platform, it's what you do with it. And because tomorrow is another day and I think we, we have been very lucky that the, the public, and th thank God, the public have been uh, very welcoming of, of our narrative and the way we try to express ourselves. So now this is how, what you do with it, and you need to continue to, to create and evolve and, and continue the narrative and continue the, the conversation. So 
I mean, it's nice, but um, it's not. This is not what defines me. What defines me is right. who I am inside. It's not what I'm getting. So, and uh, and so you also have this um, this unique relationship with your producers. You mentioned the producers, the, the the farmers, the people who are who are creating the the, the ingredients that you put together. Um, how I'm just just thinking about the San Francisco and the local element of that. How does that manifest itself? How does your relationship with the producers and the choice that you make um, and the region that we're in? How does that how does that translate? Well, so to give you a little bit of a background, my parents come from farmers from Brittany. Right. So I um, I was very taken by the um, the love and the hard work, but also the knowledge that uh, those wonderful farmers have about the, the the soil and earth and 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 things we need to do. Um, here in San Francisco, also is this is this is an I mean, it's incredible, you know. Um, I will say to everyone, you know, don't go to supermarket, just go to the farmer market at least two, three times a week to support those people that are just doing some amazing thing. Um, I think this is very important, you know, as chefs to do this. Um, we have the responsibility to make sure that we are working with those people. Um, and it's, it's, it's not political, but I'm just, you know, I was, I was really um, a little bit alarmed when I came here in the United States a few years ago. And I saw how the um, uh, f the way the food was produced in the United States was just didn't really come from farmers, come from just industrial mass, mass industrial and industrial. I just didn't understand that this is not food. So, um, so I think it's very important that we s keep supporting those little farm. I mean, they don't have a lot, but they, they can give us so much. It's it's pretty amazing. So how do you translate? So so in a nation of 300 million, how do you translate that that kind of um, integrity of food that you talk about to to 300 million people? Is it if there's if it's not supermarkets? And I know you've done a lot of thought about food as an industry. Um, how do you how do we think differently about food? Then I mean, maybe do we not have a, the right relationship with food? Or well, uh, you know, it's you know we talked a little bit about this uh, earlier. Um, when I was looking at, at at America, I think up to the 1940, yeah. it was like America was a farmland, and then in the 1950, this industrialization of food and those um, TV dinner just changed the landscape of what America. Um, and it's not that long ago. Um, I think it's, it, it has to do with education, keep continuing the conversation, uh, break down the barrier with the government and, you know, and, and, f and really talk about, it's not about greed, because what we're doing right now, we're feeding the country and the world with something that's it's going to affect and is already affecting our health. And we need to really think about it. I think we need to go back to a place where we need to go back to the basic and, and recreate that ecosystem to work together and to make sure we develop things together to go with education and, you know, kids. And I mean, we were talking about what you feed, what you feed your baby. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's super important. So know? how does that change? So right now, we, when you say baby food, you think of a Gerber bottle, right, of, of, of paste. That's right? terrible. Um, so what is your vision for how, what that? I mean, my vision to, you know, I think as human, if you, when you have a very young age, if your parents give you the right ingredient, that's going to help you to think about the way you're going to buy things or you're going to eat things when you're going to turn 15 or 20s. You might not know that, but I think this is very important. So we need to change that way, you know. Um, you know, putting sugar in everything for babies is crazy. I mean, it's just, I mean, I've, I've experienced that because I'm, I'm doing a lot of research about baby food because I want to create a line, um, not just baby, but like up to five, six, six years old and, and to understand that it starts at birth, yeah. you know, so. And certainly in France. I'm a dreamer, but I need money. So um, <laughs> anybody here? <laughs> well, I want to come back to that, the, the entrepreneurial idea, but um, how, how, so how do you, is, does France do it better? I mean, is there a sense of, of baby food and children's food that, that is different? Um, I don't know if they do it better. Uh, sometimes they're smarter, but um, 
Well, they, they're doing, yeah, they're doing, I mean, it's, it's balanced. There is some, you know, obviously there is a part of France that's not doing that great, but yes, there is, there is definitely a movement in France that's happening. Right. But also, you know, the way that I grew up, you know, I just, I grew up with fresh food and I used to go, you know, to the market with my mom, you know, twice a week and we go to the butcher, we go to the poissonnier, uh, we go to the baker. I mean, everything was like, you, you just, you know what you were eating. Yeah, it's you know a different infrastructure. Yes. So, and I think, you know, if we can do that for 10 people, we can do that for millions of people. And we need to think about, you know, it's not about instant gratification where we, we're going to, you know, companies going to have to make a profit right away. I think the bad things that can work in the world, sometimes you have a vision, it might take a little bit m more time to make money, but if the vision is right, it can change the world. Right. So, so, so you have, you, you mentioned in investors, and I, I, what it makes me think about is the, um, the way chefs of your stature, so, so one of the most celebrated chefs in the world, um, and there is this, uh, perhaps an expectation that you will open more restaurants and grow an empire and, and put up cookbooks, as you just did, um, and start creating a franchise, right? And I'm curious how you think about that. Like, is that, is that an expectation? Is that something you, you have um, an interest in beyond uh, the sense that other people have done it? I, I think, I mean, I, I want to continue to learn and to be inspired and to inspire others, but I want to be a part of the change. Yeah. So it's kind of to find a way to how you, I'm going to do this. Um, no, I'm not interested in uh, opening 10,000 restaurants. It just doesn't um, interest me. Vegas, there won't be a... Um, where is that? No, <laughs> um, <laughs> no this, is, this, is, this is not who I am. But it, it, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just it's, I want to do something else. I want to do, you know, I'm, I'm interested in, in education. I'm interested to go out there and, and really help and, and, and work with people that want to change the way that we're doing things, you know. Um, you know, climate change is something that is very interesting to me and it's very, very important. It's not a hoax. It's happening. Um, and it's, you know, when I'm looking at my industry and when I'm reading a lot of different reports, you know, it's, um, I think they said like 40, 50, even up to 60% of w what's created uh, climate change is the production of food. Mm. So we need to be aware about this. So I, I want to really invite, you know, everyone in the world, even all my, you know, all my peers to be thoughtful and conscious about it. And we need to change that too. I mean, we are in trouble. And we have to think about the future of our kids. We, we, we should not think about just ourselves today. Because I was like, oh, 20, 40, 50 years from now, I'm not going to be around. It's like, no, we have to think about the future. It's now. We get to change things. So, so that's very important to me. Yeah. Um, do, you, uh, do you find that that's a conversation, the, the climate and, and the role of agriculture? Is that a conversation that many chefs are... are eager to have or that are, are... I think it's starting right now. Yes, I think I think a lot of them, yes, they are conscious. But, you know, it's always that fine line. I was like, well, you know, if I do this, you know, I'm not going to make that much money. And maybe it's like, it's not about money. It's about, it's about the planet, you know. We, who cares about money? <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody here. Um, well, uh, Chef Kren... It has been an honor and a delight to speak to you, and uh, thank you for giving us a vision of, of uh, food. But, but I want to I want to say something yeah, about please. money. I want to I want to I want to invite you guys tonight or tomorrow. You're gonna take ten dollars, and that ten dollars I want you to go out there and buy food, and I, or anything, and I want you to to be very conscious on what you're gonna buy and who you're gonna give that that money to. So you have a choice. And for me, you have just one shot. Not McDonald's, the other way. <laughs> Go to the farmer market, but like be conscious about who, you know, how you're going to spend it, you know. And I know some stars, you know, sometimes it might be more expensive, but at the end of the day, you might spend more money on buying the food that is right for you than you're going to spend. Oh, you're going to spend the rest of your life going to the hospital and, and thinking that there's a lot of disease out there. And I think this is why America, there's so many diseases also, and health is starting with food and, and the thing that's the way they're producing food. So that's it. Indeed. Thank you, Chef. Yeah.